if I'm going to be using Wayland in any sort of capacity, I need some way to capture it. I don't have a capture PC, so that option is completely ruled out. I don't exactly want to go back to 2006 YouTube and do something like this either, so the third best option is using OBS. Now, setting up OBS under Wayland isn't that difficult. There is some extra configuration you need to do, the main problem it has, though, is it can be a little bit finicky. If all you want to do is capture your beautiful face, or maybe even capture a console through an external capture card, there's actually nothing you need to do. All you need to do is install OBS, you probably already have X Wayland set up, and just let OBS run through X Wayland, and it will just work but it won't let you capture your PC screen. To do that, regardless of whether you're using the native package or the flat pack, there is a couple of extra things we need to install. That is the wrong side, that one. First thing we need to install is Pipewire. So Pipewire, normally you would think it's being used for audio stuff. Pipewire also has a video side as well. This is what is going to be used to actually get the captures of our desktop. But because of the security model of Wayland, there's no way by itself to get that video feed into OBS. To do that, what we need is xdg-desktop-portal. Now, the name might be a little bit different depending on what distro you're using, but on Arch Linux, this is what it's called. But we also need a version of XDG Portal for our specific compositor. There is XDG Desktop Portal dash WLR dash KDE and dash GTK. Now, on my system, I'm going to be grabbing the WLR version. This is for WL roots. So anything like Sway, River, and things like that. The GTK version is for anything based on LibMutter, which is just GNOME, and then the KDE version is for, obviously, KDE. Let's go and grab this version. Now, once you've actually installed this, I would recommend just rebooting your system. Technically, there are ways to get Pipewire set up without rebooting, but it's just quicker to let the initialization happen by itself. So once you've done that, if you're using the Flatpak version, everything should just be working. If you don't want to use the Flatpak version of OBS, the objectively better version that has all of the features that are available, let's look at how we fix it for a native package. Now, on Arch Linux, the Wayland support for Qt5 is in a separate package. I can't say if that's going to be the case for every single distribution out there, but on Arch, we need to install Qt5 Wayland. OBS is a Qt5 application. Basically, this lets us run it as a native Wayland application. The other thing we need, at least, it's not needed, but it will make stuff play a bit nicer in certain situations, is Qt5 CT. This is basically a Qt5 configuration utility, which isn't needed in something like KDE. KDE has its own configuration tool, but on things like Sway, some applications don't play nicely if they don't have something like this available. Once those are set, then we need to go and set a couple of environment variables. So in my case, I'm using a ZSH emp because I'm on ZSH. If you're on Bash, you would use your Bash profile. If you're on Fish, you would use your Fish profile. If you're on anything else, work it out yourself. So what we need to do is firstly set Qt underscore QPA underscore platform, and then set this to Wayland. Now, for most people, this is the only variable you need to set. It just tells Qt that it should be doing its Wayland rendering rather than its X11 rendering. If you went and installed Qt5CT, you can also go and set the Qt underscore QPA underscore platform theme, and then set that to Qt5CT. That'll make it so it recognizes that configuration tool as the tool That'll make it so it recognizes that configuration tool as the tool controlling the theme. If you're using Sway, there might be some other things you need to do. I didn't need to add these on my system, but some people reported that by adding these, OBS then started working. The first thing being xdg underscore current underscore desktop, setting that to Sway. And then over in your Sway config, adding in these two lines right here, this system CTL line, and this dbus update activation environment command. Basically, it's going to be importing these variables into these different environments. I don't know why these would be required on some systems and not on others, but that is what I've seen. If after doing all of this, it's still not working, I would recommend just going and restarting your system to make sure that environment variables are being loaded in the place they need to be. There are some situations where you'll set the environment variable, but it's actually being set in a different shell from the shell that is opening up the application, so it looks like it's not working, 
but from where you can check, it seems like it should be. Now, I mentioned this in my original Wayland video, but if you didn't see that, there are some pretty serious flaws with using OBS on Wayland. One of those being, this right here is a hotkey. This right here is doing nothing. That's because the way that Wayland works, there's no, uh, there's no general hotkey API. So anything using global hotkeys like OBS, for example, will not function. There are means to get around it by using some like WebSocket stuff, which doesn't work right now. I am thinking of just writing my own tool to control the WebSocket. I'll talk about that in the future. But at least for right now, there's not much you can do. Now, if you're using a single monitor of the system like a caveman, getting the screen capture set up is very simple now. All you need to do is go into the plus icon here, click on screen capture Wayland, and then once you've done that, it's going to work. But you see a problem here. I am not a caveman. I have multiple monitors. So it's going to give us the interface here, which isn't exactly a convenient way to select a monitor. It's selecting it based on the name of the port it's connected to. I know my main monitor is DP-1, but it's not exactly my preferred way to select it. If you don't want to do any configuration, there are three hard-coded applications that might be used. B menu, Woffy, and Slurp. And if you have one later in the list installed, it's going to default to that one. So if you have Woffy installed, it won't use B menu. If you have Slurp installed, it won't use Woffy or B menu. I recommend that you just go and install Slurp. This allows you to click on the monitor you want to be using. Now, on most distributions, this should be packaged, especially because Slurp is used as the backend for a lot of the screenshot applications out there. Not the backend for, like, getting the image itself, but the backend for selecting an area. So go and install that. On Arch Linux, it's just in the Slurp package. And once you've installed that, then just go and restart OBS. Now, I can't actually show you this inside of OBS, so we've got a great video capture solution. This right here. So if we go on now restart OBS, you're going to see that when I'm actually highlighting the screen, it looks like it normally should. But if I go and select my other screen, now that screen has been sort of grayed out. Clicking on the screen I want to use is going to go and select that, and you won't actually see it working properly. I guess XDG Desktop Portal doesn't like two instances of OBS being open at the same time, but this is the method that I've been using in my videos. If you don't want to use B menu, Woffy, or Slurp, or you just want to force some specific application, I recommend checking out the documentation for Portal WLR. This has some information on configuring that application. Personally, though, I don't think it really matters. I think just going with Slurp is probably the easiest solution. But if you really want to do that, it's pretty easy to do. You can do it in like three lines. Now, window capture, capturing a specific application, not your entire screen, is probably something you want to do as well. And it's something I want to do, but I can't because I'm not using GNOME. So unless you're using GNOME, that feature is not going to be possible be because the way that WL Roots work and the way that KDE work aren't consistent with that implementation. And right now, only OBS on GNOME has a method to do that. There might be forks of OBS or plugins out there that do support it on things like Sway, but I certainly don't know about them. If you do, please do let me know and I will update this video, maybe make a second one or something like that. But at least for now, I don't think it's possible. But at some point down the line, that is surely going to happen. So that is the OBS Wayland experience. I hope you like it because it's probably not going to get better for a very long time. But over time, it is slowly going to get better. Now, I mentioned some variables earlier. And even with those set... I have noticed some really weird inconsistencies. So sometimes I'll be doing a video over on X11, then I'll switch over to Sway. Sometimes what I'll see is I'll have OBS open there, I'll close it, open up on Sway, and then screen capture doesn't work. But then other times it works perfectly fine. All the variables are still being set. I've tried to force it to happen one way or the other, and doing the exact same thing, I have had different results. I don't know why. There's surely something being said in the background that I don't know about, but most people aren't going to be doing that. If you just open up X11, or you just open up Wayland, everything is basically fine. If I ever wanted to completely main Wayland, 
I probably would just get a capture PC. It would make video capture so much easier. My hotkeys would work. I would just run the capture PC on X11 and we'd be good. I'm never going to main Wayland in the state that it's in because global hotkeys are so useful, but I can at least capture it and that is a good first step. But maybe you like the Wayland OBS experience and if that's the case, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.